The uppercut is a bit different when compared to some of the other upper body strikes we've looked at in the past, like the jab, the hook, and the overhand. And uppercuts are one of Canelo Alvarez's favorite punches. Considering this isn't a punch that I've broken down yet, and that I received a request for Canelo specifically, I figured it was about time to make this one. In this video, we'll look at several different angles of two really nice uppercuts, from a couple of Canelo's fights against Billy Joe Saunders and Jaime Munguia. All right, so this first angle is going to be from behind Canelo, and then the second one is going to be from this camera here. So the first thing he does whenever he slips this right from Saunders is shift his weight. Sorry about the angle, the, the video footage that I have is like zooms in while it happens. So sorry about that, but this is, this is still a pretty good angle here to see a lot of different things. So he shifts his weight from the back leg or to the back leg as he faints, and then once he starts to wind back for the uppercut, and we'll get to that in a second. He starts to shift his hips. As we know, we usually see this hip and shoulder dissociation, but if you see here, it's very subtle. They are on kind of separate planes, right? So he's doing left lumbosacral rotation and then left thoracolumbar and thoracic rotation at the same time. These are the, the trunk muscles, like the ones that we talked about, like rectus abdominis, uh, external, internal, oblique, even the muscles, the rectus spinae, like the multifidus, all the muscles that are involved in rotation are, are isometrically contracted here. Most of it is happening about the hips. So as he moves his hips here, he does something a little bit unexpected, right? You could argue that he should be in more of a covered up defensive position here. But like we set, talked about whenever we looked at the roundhouse kick, the, the, especially the, guy, the Muay Thai guys, they use that arm as an extra lever. Right, so we know that the longer the lever arm, the more torque you have about the axis, and this axis is the spine. So he's rotating about the spine, really lo extra long lever arm, gets a little bit more whipping motion for whenever he brings the punch around. Right, it's a nice isometric contraction here between the rhomboids and the upper trap of the left arm and even in the posterior delt to, to act as almost a counterweight as he uses his hips and the muscles of the trunk to rotate. And we're not necessarily good, at, he does a really good job of getting weight to the front of the leg, but that, you see that better in the next view. As he winds back here, we know that the muscles that are a, a part of the stretch reflex are on the opposite side because they are eccentrically loading as he winds back and then concentrically loading to come forward. But something that we haven't talked about is this right side bending here, almost as to create that angle so that it comes up at the, the proper angle for an uppercut, all right, which is kind of going up through the person's body instead of on the, on the sagittal plane or along the, the transverse plane, like with a hook. So he's trying to come from inferior below his head, to superior above his head. And so he, he crunches that left side down using the right internal and external oblique and the quadratus lumborum and even the lat on the right as he rotates too. So it's a really nice triplanar motion and he makes really good contact there. So we'll watch it, we'll watch it through and then we'll move to the second angle. So slip, weight shift, arm out, boom. All right, now let's fast forward a little bit this is a really good angle here. We get to see a couple of different things. So we already see the slip, we already saw the weight shift, and we're gonna start from the legs again. So as he starts to shift that weight, he's already starting to rotate his body isometrically, what we talked about before. But notice here with his left leg, there's a lot more hip closed-chained internal rotation here than we see most of the time. Most of the time we want people to kind of step off of that center line, like definitely with the with the roundhouse kick and with the overhand, we want that hip to be a little bit more externally rotated to allow us more room in that joint to rotate about. But this is kind of a sneaky display of hip mobility here because as he rotates around, his, his foot stays planted and his hip just internally rotates in the closed chain even more. All right, so that's, that's pretty impressive. He probably could have generated a little bit more power had he been more external rotated, but he didn't need it. I mean, Joe Saunders just like pretty much a nose dived into this uppercut. So here, now let's travel back up. Let's talk about this stretch reflex. Okay, so this is, I actually probably should have used this view uh, instead of Taporia for the, for the stretch reflex because he's actually winding up. He's bringing it all the way back. This is eccentric because typically whenever we're looking for at punches like the hook, the pec 
and the anterior delt are what horizontally adduct the shoulder at the glenohumeral joint. But since he's kind of got this flexion angle, right, most of these strikes, actually all of these movements are triplanar. None of them are, are exist in one plane. We don't move in one plane. The bicep is gonna be a little bit more loaded too. So not only are the pec, pec major and the anterior delt, which we've talked about before, but it's actually the bicep as well. So as he brings it back to load it, this is eccentric, 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 boom, starting to switch to the amortization phase, really quick amortization phase, and then super fast concentric phase, boom. Really good contact there. Awesome display of the stretch reflex and just the amount of thoracic rotation he uses to follow through that strike. Okay, so we'll look at it one more time. We got the slip, we got the weight shift onto the front leg, lots of hip internal rotation, trunk is moving isometrically here, not a lot of hip and shoulder dissociation, kind of like better be of, it's really sneaky. Eccentric loading of the pec major, anterior delt and bicep, and then a really good concentric follow through with a ton of hip and thoracic thoracolumbar rotation. And then in full speed to end the view. Awesome stuff. And now for the absolutely brutal uppercut he landed against Munguia. All right, so unfortunately we only have this one view here. We don't have a couple of views of this one. Well, we probably could, but they wouldn't be as up close and they wouldn't be in slow-mo. Uh, but you can still, we don't get a lot of view below his waist or below his hips, but we can see a lot of what's happening uh, in the upper body and even when he's kind of switching his hips. So with this left here that he's setting up, he even, you know, you see how he's kind of lagging behind there. Again, using that stretch reflex anytime, we, they, they just instinct, fighters instinctively know how to use that because they train it so much. They don't train it to train the stretch reflex, they get it within their training. They, they develop this understanding that if I can dissociate my hips and let my arm lag a little bit, that concentric contraction is a little bit quicker. So even when he, when he sets this up, he as soon as he makes contact, and even maybe even a little bit before, he starts to switch his hips and start to face him. And he does something that we haven't really seen before, and I think it's just because of the nature of the uppercut. Watch his shoulder blade. As he switches his hips and faces, Right, and there it's getting a little bit more of a hip and shoulder dissociation. It's very subtle like whenever we looked at Better Biev, like I mentioned before. So hips forward, left lumbo pelvic rotation. His scapula or his shoulder blade actually depresses. Right, so it's really subtle, but you can see here his upper trap's nice and tight, and then you can see it relax. And that's because the lat is working really hard to depress as he kind of circumducts, his circumduction is a movement uh, that happens at, at joints like the glenohumeral joint uh, and the hip joint, the acetabular femoral joint. Uh, they have a lot of degrees of freedom, degrees of motion. So he comes down and he actually uses mostly anterior delt and bicep here, and maybe a little bit of the muscle called coracobrachialis. I'm not sure if that would really even uh, play a huge role. Some of the clavicular fibers of the pec major but certainly not as much pec major as we see in horizontal abduction, or adduction, excuse me. So as he turns his hips, he depresses his shoulder blade and then protracts his shoulder blade to co-contract, the, the serratus anterior co-contracts with anterior delt, bicep, and the clavicular fibers of pec major to make really good contact and put Munguia on the canvas. Okay, so this was, this is a pretty unique view here, and I'm glad we did this because there's a lot of muscles that we haven't necessarily talked about. So hip switch, shoulder, shoulder lags a little bit behind, but not too much. He likes to move really tight. Shoulder blade depression, scapular depression through the lat and some with the pec minor. And then a co-contraction as, as he flexes the shoulder and protracts the shoulder blades, he is nice and tight there. If, it, if the serratus anterior weren't engaged, when he made contact, you'd see that shoulder blade kind of wing out. I'm sure you guys may have seen that in some people before. Uh, but serratus anterior, anterior delt, and the clavicular fibers of the pec major, 
and bicep all really engaged as he makes contact and a fair amount of thoracic rotation there for the follow through and really good stuff. So let's just let you watch it in full time with all those things we talked about in consideration. One more time. So hopefully this gave you a little bit more insight into what's going on anatomically and biomechanically the next time you see somebody throw a really good uppercut. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.